A very warm uh, welcome to everybody who has zoomed in today to uh, the third webinar in our series for the month of September. You will see the previous webinars that we had and the one for next week too here. We also have four interesting competitions, a painting competition, creative writing competition, a digital graphic design and digital video competition, and a photography competition. So please do look at the details and send in your entries before the closing date that has been indicated. We warmly welcome Dr. Benyura Palia Wadana, who is attached to the Ministry of Health, but presently finishing his fellowship in Australia in the Queensland prisons as a psychiatrist. He's here to talk to us and answer some questions. Welcome, Dr. Manura. Can you hear me? Yes, Joe. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to uh, uh, talk today a uh, bit, a uh, little bit on mental well-being, uh, uh, especially during uh, uh, these times when you know it's threatened, when it's very difficult to maintain our mental well-being. You know, what are the simple things we could do? uh yes. that makes yes. us that helps us to stay you know like a little bit uh at peace with our internal uh mental state so that's that that's okay. my idea today just to talk a little okay. bit about mm -hmm. so let's see if i can synchronize with it with some interesting questions um uh, uh, let's start with the first one dr Manura. Dr. Venero, there are helplines uh, sprouting up regularly now in Colombo, urging people to talk if in distress. So if they do decide to talk, it is after a prolonged period when they are unable to cope anymore. Uh, what I'd like to know is, does our social structure, our gatekeepers, our homes and our schools provide people with the life skills and awareness of how to prevent a crisis or how to even navigate a crisis? And importantly, the development of good coping skills. Dr. Manura, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, like it's, uh, uh, well, it's very hard. Uh, oh, wow. So it's, a yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, helplines are like, you know, are really important uh, in many ways. One, it's uh, uh, like a, uh, when I was in Melbourne some time back, like before I did my uh, uh, MD in Sri Lanka, I did my overseas training in Melbourne in a personality disorder center. We were running a, um, a call, like a helpline and I was talking to a few people who were running it. Usually we employed uh, people who, are, who don't have much of a knowledge in mental health. So the idea is to have someone uh, because you know we know that so i'm not going to talk a lot about suicidality here but when someone has an impulse uh regarding their uh like you know when they feel like their life is not worthy uh, that imp usually it is led by although it comes like you know after like say depression after life serious life events this act it's an impulsive act usually that's what the research shows so when it comes that at that moment that critical moment if they can, you know, if there is a way someone can validate that some that person's feeling uh, and allow uh, him to like ventilate the feelings, uh, there is a good chance uh, that you know that that opportunity, uh, you know, like it will open that floodgates. You know, the emotions will be ventilated. The person would find it soothing to do that. So it's very important. But it's a, like you know, it's a, like a double-edged sword. Sword, to be honest, like you know, if if you don't like if you don't say the right thing. If you try, uh, so the person who who is in the other other side of the line, when the when they call, 
uh, it's really important. You know, they, their ability, their capacity to care, their capacity to convey that empathy is really important because if they don't do it, uh, it might appear as a rejection. So that's the that's the difficult part about health, uh, providing help uh, for people struggling with mental issues. Uh, so if, if you are not doing the right thing, if you are not saying the right thing, uh, it might look in their eyes, it might look like it's a rejection. Uh, so that's, uh, so if you can balance that, so you don't have to have like, you know, you don't have to have be a psychologist or a counselor or like qualified doctor to do that. Uh, so if you have this, some people have the innate capacity to communicate empathy, some people have, but it's a skill to be honest. You can learn, you can teach it and you can learn it. Uh, if you can practice it, yes, definitely you can have a change. But as I said, uh, it has to be like, you know, uh, it's a very uh, delicate area and uh, the, the, the uh, skill set is really important. Uh, and and that's an area I think we have to work on. Like, you know, it's not, it's not having like, you know, helpline, having a helpline is not enough in that way. So that having that uh, uh, skill set is really important. And yeah, with regard to the, our culture, yeah, so we have this uh, collectivistic culture uh, compared to individualistic cultures like here now I'm in Australia, uh, where people, the co community, the extended families, uh, the relatives, uh, the villagers, you know, the uh, people, you know, like uh, uh, look after each other. Uh, and there is this, uh, uh, especially, you know, that, that's why we see the uh, illnesses like personality disorders are not very common in our cultures. Let's say uh, uh, mother, if the child doesn't get the care from the mother, let's say mother, you know, like, you know, uh, leaves the family, the step, uh, the grandmother would step in uh, and it would look after the kids. Uh, so that kind of, that strong cultural bonds, you know, those are really important. So those those things have like a healing property in our culture. That's why we don't see much personality disorders and certain trauma related see, uh, conditions we see in uh, developed countries. We don't see them much because the individualistic culture, the people are, you know, uh, they are for the, their own benefit. Or you know, people are from their childhood, they are. Uh, trained to look after only themselves. So they won't extend, them, they don't stretch themselves to accommodate another person to their life. So uh, it creates loneliness, uh, separation, uh, anxiety, uh, lack of purpose. Uh, so the collectivistic culture, I mean, it has its problems. Uh, you know, we've been, uh, you know, you lose your boundary, people have control over your life. You don't feel like you feel smothered especially if you are living with controlling parents or controlling partners, you feel smothered. You don't feel the freedom. There are negative sides to it, but overall, I would say uh, collectivistic culture has, a, like, especially like a, that social responsibility that you want to care for your country, you want to, and those things also come in a collectivistic culture. So the culturally, I think we are in a very advantaged position. Uh, uh, yeah. That's that, that's very important, I think, the, in that regard. Uh, so it's a protective factor, I would say. So, Dr. Manuela, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Dr. Manuela, I had also wanted to know, now, um, my real uh, question was that, of course, these are, there are these helplines where people, when they can't cope anywhere more, they call those helplines, like they would go and see a ther therapist. What I what I have really wanted to know is what kind of structure do our gatekeepers, our parents, our schools, how do we prepare these people? How do you pe uh, prepare people for impending issues and adversities and help them to cope with it? So that they may not need to use a helpline, but they will be able to care for themselves and you know and come out of things. Well, uh, to be honest, seeking help, you know, I would. I'm always a huge proponent for seeking help. Uh, so, uh, just because you had a good upbringing, just because uh, you are you live in a, like a. Uh, 
really conducive environment, that doesn't mean human suffering is universal. Wherever we, we live, you know, whatever the country, that's why, you know, uh, the Emile Durkheim, you know, the sociologist said, if you do build a country uh, where people get everything they need, you know, uh, uh, just society, developed country, people have, people get everything they wish for. If they, even if you give them, people would be dissatisfied. They would be dissatisfied about the minor things about their life. You know, I see it in developed. Now I live at the moment I, I'm in a developed country. I see that the frustration, the human suffering is not, uh, it's not different to uh, Sri Lanka, right? So it's just, uh, uh, so seeking help, especially when you, uh, uh, if you think you need help, you have to seek help, but uh, you will never be, I mean, we will, whatever the system we employ, uh, uh, we won't be able to, you know, make people fully safe. So I am really. Uh, so if we, if we, it's an illusion. I would say, let's say you build a be beautiful environment. Uh, uh, you teach them about self, uh, self care skills. You know, you teach about, teach them about emotional literacy. Uh, would that make them not vulnerable to future suffering? No, no. You can't do that. You can't. You cannot do that. So that's the human condition. Because it's it, it's related to our frontal lobe, you know. We we have this. Uh, uh, we are different from other animals. We have this because of this huge frontal lobe in our brain. It is a simulator. Our frontal lobe is a simulator. It can predict future events. What can happen? Uh, and this is the beauty of it. Also, like you know, we can uh, think about the future sim uh, scenario uh, and live it today and make it happen today. That's why we are advancing as a species. You know, that's why we can uh, think of uh, uh, things which are not, we can't see. We can imagine things and make things happen. But the bad side of it, because of that, we create anxiety. So anxiety, frustration, depression is a part of human condition. Uh, wherever you are born, like wherever, who, whoever, who are you, who, will, who is your caretaker, they help you from that suffering. Therefore, I would say seeking help should be normalized. Seeking help should be going to therapy, meeting a doctor, uh, talking, uh, picking up a helpline, uh, uh, talking to a friend, crying, especially men, uh, uh, you know, expressing their emotions, you know, saying that you are depressed when you are depressed. Uh, they're saying that you are suicidal when you're suicidal. Yes, it's really important. So I, I don't think, you know, I personally don't think you can save people from suffering by a good upbringing because it's a part of human. It's, it, once if you're born as a human, you are bound to suffer, <laughs> unfortunately. This is actually uh, the, this is where, what the Eastern philosophy also teaches. Uh, but that's the truth because whatever you have in this, it's called life condition. Some of the spiritual teachers say this, like your life and your life condition, whatever your life condition is, uh, what, uh, you know, your job, your uh, wealth, they can't bring you lasting happiness. One, at some point, you are going to get frustrated if you attach to identity to that, you know, if you believe that those things are going to save you, you know, especially your education, uh, you are, uh, everything you have, like, you know, even you apply. So therefore, uh, uh, being open to this, actually there is this, I uh, can't remember her name, but there's this beautiful book called Wintering, written by a, uh, an author called Catherine, I think Catherine, her name is Catherine May. She wrote a book called Wintering. She talks about, you know, what happens to the trees in the winter, you know, like a, we, during the winter, trees prepare for the winter. They don't reject the winter. They don't say, no, no, I want, I want an eternal summer. The trees, trees won't tell that. They will uh, shed their leaves. Uh, they will go into a kind of a dormant state and they will survive winter. They won't die. And then when the summer or the, uh, when the spring comes, they would bloom. Uh, this is what we should do. When we are in this bad state, when we're not doing well, when we are, when the life is too are not too kind to us. We should realize, okay, this is the time to winter. This is this is this is the time to go inside uh, and look after myself. You know, do little things. You know, maybe go for a walk, go to the gym, or write a journal, uh, do a meditation, uh, take up a yoga course. Uh, 
uh, not to reject that. You know, no, no, I shouldn't feel be feeling this. You know, I shouldn't be. Uh, I, I had a good upbringing, therefore I'm not going to depress. You know, I, I'm, I have this job. I'm a consultant. I'm a doctor, or I'm, I'm this or that, and then I should not be depressed. Those kind of thoughts actually make us. Uh, one thing it make it creates what's called self stigma. So we won't seek help till the last moment. The other thing is we are we become unkind to people who suffer because we think there's a personal weakness in these people uh, for coming to therapy or taking medication. Uh, once we see that common nature of suffering, you know, we know notice that no, we I am tend to suffer and you are going to suffer, and it's a part of the uh, human condition. Uh, then it's very easy for all of us. Therefore, I I, I really believe. Uh, it's very important and I would invite all of you to try to read that book if you can get hold of it. It's called Wintering. Uh, it's about uh, how, how how to survive, especially like, you know, when going through a negative period of life, you know, how to be kind to yourself, uh, how to be extra kind, because we are not very kind to us. We are, when we are suffering, uh, uh, the greatest part of suffering is created by us being not kind to ourselves. We tell ourselves things like, uh, oh, I shouldn't be feeling like this. I was doing well last week. You know, uh, I'm an idiot. You know, I, I mess things up. You know, we are very unkind to ourselves when we are going through a suffering. So uh, we have to, if you won't turn things around, uh, you have to like change that perspective. Uh, do you, do, do you, shall I, do you want me to describe it in Sinhala a little bit? Please, if you can summarize, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay, like Mama Hitanawa, then Api, then Api Jivite, then Lanka Vagir Attaka, Apita Godloku, Manasika Sauke Path in Belvo, Api Jivite Sundar Natunata, Apitina Deva Lecha Sundar Natunata, then Tata, then Tava Godakma, Apit Thernata, Thernana Godak, again, life condition, Niki, Aduakti Bunata, Api culture, good protective factors, Tianava. A collectivistic culture collectivistic culture individualistic culture Australia America Vadi hiti piriming and Haginigia, a may Samaja Vidyani, Egolungi Jivite, Prashna Kianapulan, Kidinek the Nikila. Jomo Adi the Nikidinek the Uttare the net, Kia Kidinekinetikila. Average. In America. Haginigia, like adults piriming and Haginigia, like Jivite, close cut tea, Kidinekina the Kila. Okay. Average number the Kiva given at the Kidinek. One. None. One, 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 no zero. One, one, no none. Hari. Oh, Egatama, Egatama, average gun. Think a collectivistic culture, Kitina was it, and we can up a GV to Ronto may poverty and alcoholism, and Epotea, Egalas and Kilatina. We can pour a stern up a GV, a GV, and I told you, and I got Collectivistic culture, you are thinking of us good a good thing, and I make an appeal, give it a pit up a palnet, Torova Gedanina, and it won't have a dear acre, Mehavan had no gratitude, no other person could have tino. A bad way put a tin of us good up, and egg and a terum gun nigger. Itama Vedagar. I think Himavaladi, a helpline hicker, hurry, ekmo, Uda will an acre. I can api uh api cocher on the duty at the hitia, tapi me mote, a pit mu api on the rasa, on the mutan the hitia, a pi on the mukini kasada bandela hitia, a pi jivite, a pi monatanaka de gil hitia, uh duka kienica, term suffering kienica, human condition nea kega. I can a pin shaking, a pi loke to la pitiana deva, like an api danuma, a pi buddhi, a pi katugarga tupadi, uh saha. Eka daily practice, a 
මේ මට ඒක හොඳට තේරෙනවා මොකද හිර ගෙදර මම වැඩ කරද්දි ගොඩක් මට හම්බ වෙනවා ජීවිතේ ඒ කියන්නේ කිසිම බලාපොරොත්තුවක් රහිත අය ඉන්නවා ජීතන ඒ කියන්නේ සමහරද මම ඊයේ බැලුවා පෙරේද බැලුවා කාන්තාවක් යා අවුරුදු 23යි ඒ ජීවිතාන්ත දක්වා හිර දඬුවම් ලැබලා තියෙන්නේ ඒතර යා පැරෝල් පැරෝල් කියන කන්ඩිෂන් එකකින් එළියට එන්න පුළුවන් පොඩි චාන්සයක් තියෙනවා ඒක තියෙන්නේ තව අවුරුදු 20කින් ඒ එහෙම එන්න චාන්ස් එක පොඩ්ඩක් හරි එන්න යාට එතකොට යා ඉන්න ජීවිත කාලෙම ඉන්න චාන්ස් එක වැඩි ඇත් කරන්න ඒතර කොහොමද මේ වගේ කෙනෙක් ජීවත් වෙන්නේ කියන ප්‍රශ්නේ තියෙනවා නේද यानी कव दावत एलियट इन हम बेवेनी ने कव दावत पावला क्या देनी ने यार टे यार टे किला किन्हीं काम बेवेने तो रुको हम बेवेने वाके किन्हीं जीवन तेने तो रु यार लते कता खराब तेरनो यार जीविते में मोहते तुले जीवन तेने नेतंग जीवन तेने बैग गोल्लो डैक्टर में यार में मोहते तुले जीवन तेने बाल नो यार क्या नहीं � मुखदेट दवस हंगीम मेन्टेन some momentum so you you should have at least three or four things that you can easily tick off even on a bad day then you have the sense of self uh, self efficacy you feel like okay i i'm can do this i can do this so that's what i saw in prisoners who are incarcerated for life so they can do few things and they stay they remain uh, like connected with their life and in a paradoxical way these people when their life were very chaotic when they were in the community they were taking drugs being violent you know fighting with people once they come into the prison uh, because of the structure that provides in the prison like we they have this uh, uh, although prison is not the best place you know it's not the most in, uh, like uh, human uh, i wouldn't say that you know the human rights are fully protected there it's not but that structure that provides it, you know in a in a strange way people feel some uh, sense of peace because of that uh, because their life now after like you know this is the first time some some of them we, prison is the first place that provided that structure to them uh, so that kind of a structure is really important for you so you have to have like a few things that you always can go in uh when because outside world is not reliable for happiness it's not a reliable source of happiness your relationships your job uh, whatever you have right now although they look uh, uh i mean a really good example you know, one of the one of the, look at the cricket team now you know uh, how people were talking about them like 6 months ago right now how do they talk about them like you know now they feel like you know they 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 say that they are the, you know like people love them so what so what happened so you you, you are 
so it's not them actually you know the way they are being evaluated by people so you are worth self you, the way you the the way the world treat you uh, would depend on their evaluation however good you are you know, however you strive to be uh, good in their eyes uh, their evaluation would uh, determine the kind of treatment you get so it's not a reliable source of happiness you have to go in that's why they say and that's what they say uh, when westerners when they first went to tibet uh, they were surprised uh, to see the number of the monks and the uh, people who are on this uh, you know like a pathway to freedom there in tibet because the tibet is like in, it's, it's an it's a very harsh place you know very cold uh, a summit where the sun is really harsh and it's really cold and so they had because the world outside of them the world is really harsh they had to go in they had to find some meaning here so that's what we should do so if because it's it's, it's very simple theory it's a simple theory like it's like this working on yourself you know working in yourself is the best gift you can give anyone anyone in your life let's say your children your family members if you don't work on yourself you cannot care for anyone else you can't look after or you can't uh, you can't give love or caring for anyone else if you are not working on yourself because then you become very needy that's what happens you know that's what happens to people you know they say you know we live for children uh, that's that's the biggest insult you can do to a child when you say that because then you live then you expect things from them you know then you okay i have sacrificed this for you and i have done this for you uh, because i live for you and they and you don't live that inspiring life uh, and your life is not an inspiration and you are not following uh, you are too passion or you are not uh, connected with your true self and you say that you live with for this person that's too much of a burden for that person so that's what happened so therefore i think mean, that's why you know participating in a webinar like this really important uh, it it gives you the it, it, this is uh, this is one of the most important thing you could do to you uh, you can do to do for yourself you know like uh, having this idea you know where, where if you can find happiness here uh, then uh, and love here then you can give it away then you are suitable for a relationship uh, with anyone uh, once you have found it here or if you are if you are not happy alone uh, then you will be let's say if you are with someone then you then need to be two unhappy people together uh, then the, uh, creating more unhappiness and being you know creating more neediness like uh, because you expect things uh, the other person to fulfill you uh, that's a sad space to be so that's why working on you it's not selfish it's not selfish taking time away from the people going inside and that's why actually to be honest when people frustrate us when people let us down it's really good because then they remind us then you, we can't rely on them uh, especially like in that's what that this is what i tell people you know when they have been uh, like you know uh, deceived by or betrayed by someone a uh, family member or uh, it's a, it's a very good opportunity for them to think you know realize the value system in their life you know where they could it's not to reject the other person it's not that to hate the other person uh, not to love the person even you can love the person but then you realize okay these people or these things or these uh, relationships uh, i had in my life are not reliable sources of information actually uh, there is this beautiful uh, psychiatrist there he said he's a psychologist i think Uh, this guy called gabor mate he said i think he's a portuguese man he talks about this in a beautiful way he said all the obstacles in your life all the roadblocks in your life uh, are the uh, are are not random he says that is the part of you that loves you which tells you you know which which pushes you uh, you know reminds you you know where you are going is wrong you know where you are heading is not wrong heading heading is wrong and you it, it forces you to take a different path sometimes it could be painful it could be a rejection it could be a death of someone it could be a serious illness in you it tells you stop this stop what you are doing uh, take uh, take a take an account of what's happening in your life and 
and change your priorities. So that's the important. So that's why suffering is important. That's why I don't think we can create a world without suffering. Uh, so if you can learn from your suffering, that's the best teacher. And you will never have a teacher like that. So that's, uh, the, therefore, uh, yes, it's uh, uh, your life. Uh, uh, so actually this comes from, uh, there's this uh, theory called dichotomous thinking uh, in psychology where people have a tendency to divide things. This actually is there in the Eastern philosophy too. Uh, like in Theravada Buddhism, they talk that too, where people have a tendency to uh, divide things, you know, good, bad, uh, favorable, non-favorable. So when you li live your life in this way, you know, by dividing things, uh, uh, pleasant, unpleasant, uh, then you reject a part of your experience because that part you don't like. It's a negative part. Uh, and you try to embrace and get attached to the uh, pleasant part. That's the that's where suffering comes because this this division is is an arbitrary one. Although we make it concrete, it's an arbitrary division. It doesn't exist in the world. For example, uh, the uh, certain things that you think as you know so pleasurable, they bring uh, let's say a promotion. Uh, a promotion when you say a promotion looks like you know it's a pleasant it's, it's a pleasant thing. But it brings a lot of negativity too, right? You have to, maybe you are working, you, you will be too stressed, you know, maybe uh, a job will become too demanding and you will lose a lot of free time, you know, like a, it's a package. So seeing this in this way, you know, nothing is actually negative, completely negative or completely positive. Yeah, if you can look at, maintain that view with life. This is the problem with people with personality disorders, actually, they can't, maintain that they, they lack the dichotomous thinking. They have to have the black and white thinking in life. You know, things are either, people are either really good or really bad for them. Or, or things are really good. These people are in battles all the time. You know, we see that they are on Facebook. Uh, like, you know, they, they want to abolish things. They want to destroy things or they want people, you know, like a, that's how they will see the world. You know, they are either, people are really bad. Some people, some people are really good. So, it's a sad way to look at the world because then you are just here, you know, like you are not seeing the reality. Uh, your reality is just here and you like what's called mentalization. Uh, you can't see uh, because you are stuck in your own mental pattern. Um, yeah. Dr. Thank you so much uh, for that very comprehensive uh, response. And I really enjoyed listening to all your tips and the way you speak. It's wonderful listening to you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. So I'll just move on to another question, uh, which really also uh, is uh, Dr. Manura Sumitra is mostly concerned about the feelings of our callers, which we help them to explore always. Very nice. Very nice. So people oh, may slip into distrust when their feelings are hurt and self-esteem affected. Especially when parents, spouses, and teachers may label them. Stigma often emerges in the form of derogatory language and these labels that shames people, remains with them all their lives, and are extremely difficult to remove, Dr. Manura. For instance, slow learners are compared with the performance and achievements of other children, while their real strengths are undervalued and remain unappreciated. Dr. Manura, can you give us your comments on this, please? That's a, that's a really beautiful question uh, uh, and uh, very, it's, it shows the, you know, the Sumitra has like, you know, grasp what, uh, what's actually uh, is the problem, you know, like uh, you have to like, you know, strategies before talking about, you know, this is what happens in psychotherapy too sometimes. Uh, if you are not really good in it, uh, you will go straight away, go to strategies before these feelings, you know, strategies are, always are not important at all. Strategies are not important. So this is what happens when we talk to people also. They, when we talk to couples, they talk, we try to solve their strategies uh, rather than uh, going to the emotions. So the need, so this is what's important, the emotional need, the underlying any behavior, any communication. This is actually, there's this beautiful book written by a guy called Marshall Ra Rosenberg called Nonviolent Communication. Uh, so he talks about this need. Uh, 
he died recently he's an amazing man uh, so he wrote this book called non violent communication he said uh, any any communication is a request because when i talk to you uh, uh jomo like i express i, I although I, it looks like i'm not requesting anything i'm requesting a response from you something otherwise i wouldn't talk you know i would just be silent when i talk to you i expect i expect something so that's called a, so any 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 communication is a request he says so people don't know how to do that so they, they that's that's why they are sad you know that's that's why they can't uh, so there is an underlying absolute absolutely correctly said that underlying uh, need emotional need is really important unfortunately in our culture uh, this part is uh, this emotional literacy uh, it has a big problem because it's just a, uh, you know the we have this uh, weird i don't know from where we learned this uh, weird thinking that we ha- we can make people happy by rejecting negative emotion so we tell ch- t- tell children like you know things like this andal nepa moon ellang innepa ne taraka ganne pa mata me oy moon pennanne pa oy diyata katha karanne pa uh ayyo poda kina vela inna ko uh like we we would uh make people guilty for having a negative emotion uh then there are few two things happen one one of the saddest thing happen is uh you know we humans uh, uh psychologists say humans have two basic needs one uh, is attachment you should feel connected to someone like you should feel that you know you should feel like you know you are being part of someone's life that's really important for us then the freedom freedom of you know who we are you know we should not feel like trapped so we have these two important needs when we are shamed for having an emotion when we are shamed for having an anger then you know then we get scared let's say our primary caregiver when our mother or father when they shame us for or reject us for having a negative emotion then we become uh, you know the we try to the way we compensate for that uh, is we become nice dead people we become nice but we are not connected with our emotions <clears throat> so these people that's why niceness is not a good quality uh, and it's rewarded in the society like you know when nice people oh this she's a nice girl you know like she listen to her mom uh, he's a nice boy you know this niceness kills people these people become depressed at some point because they have like you know lived their life rejecting their emotions rejecting their needs rejecting their impulses uh, for the sake of acceptance so they would like to create that identity for themselves as a nice person in order to become accepted so that's a sad part the other sad thing about it when you reject emotions uh, people become poor in the emot- emotional literacy because then because it's just uh, because the negative emotions uh, they they tend to reject their negative emotions so when they become adults they don't know when they like they don't know what to do when they have negative emotion so that so then they want to escape they want to escape pain this is what happens so any addiction uh, uh because you know uh, john probably you, you are connected with melmetro too so you know uh, most of the addiction is a running away from a pain some kind of a pain so it's a, it's, it's just a, it's a sad thing so so you have to this uh, any addiction maybe a mobile phone addiction sex addiction or uh, drug addiction any addiction there some people you know someone said uh, remember who said this uh, people go to the church and to the bar for the same reasons uh, you know they look for something you know they look for uh, an answer to a pain in a destructive way in a suicidal way in addiction so that's what happens so this is what happens to people who reject the pain so other uh, or either they go to depression or they become uh, as suicidal or they can become addicted or they become workaholics some of them cope by becoming workaholics so they just work and work and work so they don't have time to think uh, and then what happens to them so they create this suffering cycle so their children feels rejected and their their close family members feel rejected and it creates this ongoing suffering for everyone because 
because of this one person's inability to deal with the negative emotions. So it creates this uh, trans, what's called transgenerational uh, or transmission of uh, trauma, where people would go from, uh, people, would, people, people would learn to reject emotions. So it's really important. So any, any expression, any, when someone's talking about a, a problem, going to the emotion, going to the underlying emotion, what is this emotional need which is not being addressed? And uh, because people are not really good, because people, people don't know, because the language is very poor here. That's the problem. They don't know uh, uh, how to express their sadness. Uh, they will, it, it is usually expressed as anger. Uh, yeah, there is this, someone said, uh, I, I can't remember where I read that, you know, I sat with my anger for a long, uh, for, uh, for a long time. Then she told me her real name was sadness. Uh, uh, so that's what this anger is. You know, the anger is an externalization of sadness usually. Uh, so we have to see that you have, if you just respond to anger of a person, you wouldn't see the sad person behind that anger. Like, you know, who has the shield of sad anger? Uh, and the world is a bad place, you know, like and he would blame the world for his internal dysphoria. Uh, so this is how people live. It's a kind of a like very common coping strategy and places like, you know, social media provide a really good platform for people to vent, vent their anger. Uh, that sadness, you know, the and sadness converted to anger. So it's then people feel good about it. And, uh, and it's, but it's a suicidal way of expression, expressing a need. Uh, so it's, it, 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 we have to work a lot. I mean, there should be a lot of work in schools. Uh, we tried to do that something uh, so, sometime back, uh, uh, but it didn't, uh, we didn't uh, with few schools, uh, you know, few programs, you know, how to improve the emotional literacy, but it should come. It, it should be one of the, I, I think it's a human right. It's a human right uh, for a child to have this knowledge. Uh, if you are depriving a child uh, of this knowledge, it's a violation of human rights. Thanks, uh, Dr. Veniru. Thank you very much again. Very comprehensive and very interesting and exciting. Uh, doctor, now uh, there are four questions which I would like to ask you now before I ask you my next question because of the time uh, allocated. Would you mind if I start on the questions because the questions seem very interesting and you may like to answer them. Of course. So, that's, um, that's the most important part, right? Yes, so may yeah. I ask you the first question from uh, the audience? Yes, uh, yes. go ahead. It addresses yeah. you, Dr. Venura. In the context of doing three to four things, even when there is no hope left and ticking them off, it's a great strategy. However, I am curious to hear your thoughts about what happens when people cannot access their frontal lobe, especially in a crisis. What can people do to lessen their emotional and arousal and activate their thinking brain? Thank you. Beautiful. Very good question. Someone who is really has a good understanding uh, only could ask such a question. Uh, yeah. So for, for the person who asked the question, you are already halfway there. Uh, uh, so, yes. One thing, uh, so this is why you know, like, uh, as someone said, uh, you have to practice like a devil uh, to play like an angel. Um, so if this is why the work you do when you are not in the negative space is really important. Uh, uh, so the that's why, like, you know, you wouldn't access it, you know, like uh, when you are, it's called, you know, in uh, this, this the therapy called dialectical behavioral therapy, which we used for people with severe personality disorders. Uh, this dialectical behavioral therapy talks about the thing called emotional mind and rational mind. What you talk about here is what's called emotional mind. When we are being, you know, consumed by the emotions, when we are overwhelmed by an emotion, then we, then our rational part of the brain, we can't access it. That's why we say things that we don't mean to loved ones. Uh, we do things that we don't mean. Some people do that and end up in prison or end up in a very negative space, get a disease or like a sexually transmitted disease or something. 
so end up, end up in a very negative space uh, so uh, when you when you when you are consumed by the negative uh, when you are consumed by the emotion uh, it's really important uh, you have to practice uh, uh, this before that's why i'll say it's, an, it's it should be a daily practice uh, how here yeah. <clears throat> the simplest way i can explain is this uh, mindfulness you should be able to let's say uh, this this uh, spiritual guru called ekhat tole he says uh, you should all you should be able to differentiate between your life and your life condition your life condition is what's happening to you on a daily basis you know they're going to work uh, submitting your thesis buying groceries picking up the kids from the school you know this is what your life condition is you know what's happening in your life on a daily basis that's not your life that is not your life that's not the only part of your life that's a part of life he says you know let that happen in the periphery you know let that happen you know going to the work you know submitting the report uh, buying stuff you know cooking uh, you know let that happen but you know maintain the awareness uh, it's called metacognition it's called metacognition in psychology uh you know the part of you see that what's happening in you uh for example for example of metacognition is let's say when you are reading a book uh let's say you read a book after some time you know you see your mind has run away somewhere uh and now you say oh my god i'm holding the book and i'm not reading this is the part of the part of you that tells you this you know you are not reading that's the metacognition so if you can develop mindfulness you know you have to practice some kind of a mind going now that's why maybe doing some meditation some breathing meditation uh, yoga uh, anything uh, that keeps you know right some people like stuff like you know uh, uh, mountain climbing uh, because those those things need excessive focus you know if you need, you can't be a mountain climber and be in like wandering your mind because you can die you know so you have to so people that's why people do this high speed sports like you know driving high speed you know it keeps you it's not the pleasure you know we thought it's like earlier we thought it's the adrenaline rush but that's not exactly the case it's this excessive mindfulness you know you need to be fully you have to forget everything you can't be thinking about your bank loan when you are driving at 130 or 150 kilometers or 200 kilometers per hour uh, so that's so you have to have some kind of mind i'm not asking you to do that i'm asking you to do some kind of mindfulness activity so then you can able to see you know your mental state and you know, what happens to you what happens to you then uh, when you are going into that negative space then then you are not overwhelmed by the emotions when it happens so then you know you know your decision making process uh, we did the recently you know we we are doing and since i'm in the prison now we do what's called a chain analysis in patients who are doing something bad you know like people who cut themselves or bash someone or do some disruptive you know they some of the patients in some we have some of the you know I, one of the unit type work we have one of the most violent violent you know clinically diagnosed violent patients so these people when they have done something terrible uh, we sit down with them and we try to go through what's called a chain analysis you know we look at what were the predisposing factors you know you know the let's say he has uh, damaged the window we would look for the predisposing factors what how was he before the day before maybe he was not sleeping well maybe he got a phone call from the girlfriend two days ago which may be which created the negative emotion in him and then what triggered it you know who said what and uh, then someone said you know uh, uh, someone didn't give him his tea then he thought you know i'm worthless you know what happened after the trigger what happened okay you start to feel like it, uh, start to think you know i'm a bad person you know this is how my mother treated me to this why this is why my wife left me you know i am a terrible person there is no point in living you know just small incident which is you know, not related to these thoughts can gi- give rise to this if you are not aware if you can't see yourself from an outsider's perspective you can't see this uh, because it's all a truth true for you at the when it's happening but you can see how this unrelated incident can give rise to this uh, chain of thoughts and cause in this eventuality with this crisis uh once we do this chain analysis analysis when you do it over and over again people would realize oh yes this is what happens in me this is what happens so therefore it's very important to have a mindfulness practice and then you can use that uh 
when you are in so sometimes you won't do it in the first time uh, sometimes you would see it after the event just after the event shit i did this again you will realize it but after some time you realize okay i have some control over you know i can see things uh, when the things become negative you know i can i, I get more I get a more better perspective of it so gradually it happens it won't happen overnight because we, you are because our minds been trained to think in the other ways you know function uh, re, uh, not to respond but to react you know there is a difference between response responding and reaction so response is you choose what to do reaction is an automatic thing you know a lot of people lot of people just react mata mehema kiwa nisa thai margin mehema ki oya ata kiyawune mata oya homa karai naththam mama mehema karanni na naththam oya e nisa thamai mata mehema une Yeah, so these these people are victims of life unfortunately when you react uh, they don't notice that you know though, though it look like a big thing you know when you say but control like they are victims unfortunately yeah uh, thanks doctor thank Hopefully you very much we answered the question <laughs> <laughs> well, of course it did uh, another interesting question uh, the neediness that you spoke about when you don't work on yourself doesn't that also stem from living in a culture where boundaries in relationships are scarce when the individual's autonomy is not respected so how do you draw a line between working on yourself and living in a culture where enmeshment is more common if you like i can read out to you again yes no 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 good question good question okay? i right. i got it yeah it's it's a good question and it's a, it's a, it's a, it is the battle you know uh, it's a battle it's a battle it's just a, uh yeah this there is this beautiful book written by uh uh an indian psychologist who lives in usa called dr chefali she wrote she wrote a book called conscious parenting so she, she talks about this a lot uh this uh, you know the ability to give freedom Uh, and ability to care you know we have to have balance you know like uh, it's very hard to uh, uh, like in especially uh, we know that in our culture a lot of self harm in young people happens uh, because of this smothering effect of uh, family environment you know this it's a very rigid hierarchy in the families in sri lanka unfortunately like you know there is no the communication happens on happens only on one way from the top to the bottom only the bottom up communication is not possible at all so only way to create a bottom up communication is to create a emotionally arousing situation maybe self harm may do something maybe damage something you know do something bad so that's a this is a big big problem uh, this is a big problem uh, because uh, it's a, it's a sad problem too because uh, parenting is a two way process if you just believe that you know you are the person who has all the answers and you are the this little person is just have to learn learn everything from you you miss a golden opportunity uh, to learn uh, from that person so you, because you miss an opportunity it's it's a loss uh, uh, <clears throat> so it's a, so you have to look at it in a, as a two way process so this uh, so expressing your need and you know like a that's why this assertiveness is very important you know like uh, we can talk another session we can do another session on assertiveness uh, yeah. we lack assertiveness in our culture uh, so assertiveness is one of the it's not aggression it's not neglect of other people's emotions it's been true to yourself and true to everyone else like you know if assertive a person who's not assertive is not reliable because he would just try to fit in he would just try to tell what you tell you what you want to hear and uh, that person is not a very reliable source of information and you can't trust that person to stand up for you when you are not there even like you know so that's why the assertiveness is really important so training assertiveness uh, so we are not doing it we are not we are terrible in it because we train people to obey you know like uh, physically obey you know worship people i'm not against it i'm not against i'm we have to it's, it's, it's the beautiful part of the culture uh, respecting your elders but yeah like you know children should be learned to respect their bodies you know like you know that should not be controlled by someone else so uh, 
in a, do things from their bodies or minds uh, that they are not happy because it creates this uh, uh, sense of helplessness in the end. And, you know, at some point they realize, you know, I have no control over my actions or my things, the things happen to me or things I do. So it's really important. So that's a part, that's a big challenge. That's a huge challenge, I would say. Uh, so that enmeshment uh, is, uh, it comes from the neediness too, from the parent or the partners, uh, because they need to have the other to fulfill them. And the other is an extension of them for the parent, unfortunately. The parent who don't respect boundaries, the child is an extension of them. So the fa failures uh, of the child, or like uh, so child, anything they have to create, they take them really personally. And that's a terrible, terrible place for a child to be. Uh, uh, with an living with an enmesh parent, uh, I think it it is more damaging than living uh, with an absent parent, <laughs> because absent parent you know you at least you develop some self you know self self care skills, uh, but with enmeshed parent you 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 have to parent that parent, uh, you have to go to the get you know adopt that troll. That's a very sad place. Thanks, uh, Doctor. I'm going to ask you another interesting question, but you need to be a bit brief because I have a huge challenge here with time. So, can I ask yeah. you the question? And I hope I'm not Please. cramping your style. No, 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 no. Please go ahead. Okay. So, COVID-19 brought about toxic positivity, especially on social media where influencers motivated people to shut off negative feelings and just focus on being motivated and maintain a hard front, although there is horrific adversity around them. Corporates adapt this attitude as well to increase productivity in their employees. Dr. Venura, what are your comments on this and how do we shift this culture? Mm, good question. Uh, again, uh, it's a... Uh, this positive thinking and positive uh, motivation, influence, social influences, uh, just uh, like in, sometimes when you think about it, uh, these people come from a really like a need. It's a huge need for them. Like, you know, it's especially like a, a people who want to help others, they tend to help others. Uh, they, they struggle. They struggle, right? They, 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 it's, it's part of their struggle sometimes is to be, you know, like this altruism, especially. You know, this is uh, another, there's a beautiful book called, book named uh, Good for Nothing. I can't remember who wrote it. It's about, it, this book talks about altruism. So this, uh, people want to change the world. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, all these ideas sometimes is a, it's a, it's a kind of a rebel against their, own uh, meaninglessness sometimes. Uh, so that's the sad part. So that's once you haven't, if you haven't connected with you, uh, you need to do something. You have to be bigger than you, uh, or be part, big part of. So your battle becomes your identity. So you are. So that. So we have to be really careful when we are listening to someone. Who are we listening to? You know, these advices are really. Uh, yeah, I, I would say not really good, you know, not, not very uh, helpful too sometimes. Uh, so I, what I can tell uh, anyone listening, really be careful uh, when you are listening to someone, especially someone who wants to be popular in social media, who, is a, uh, who wants to become, you know, especially someone talking about positivity, uh, excessive positivity, you know, what to do, you know, how to stay positive, uh, all these things, you know, like a, uh, I think that's really, be really careful. Uh, that's the only thing you could do because people would do this all the time. There would be someone always, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, always see it as a, uh, their fight against their own meaninglessness. Uh, that's, what, that's how they fight their own meaninglessness, uh, trying to create uh, uh, some overall. This, these people are really sad because we see sometimes them in therapy. Uh, so it's you not know, uncommon for us to see them. Sometimes I see them in prison now. Uh, uh, not uncommon. So it's a uh, so that be really careful to whom you are listening to. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, especially the positivity thing. 
because it's re rejecting negativity to adopt positivity uh, is a de de terrible thing. But there is a way, like, you know, like a, everything in your, I mean, w the world you see, 80% of it, I would say, is a, is your perception, is how you see it. Uh, so the, uh, so the, you can't see anything objectively, to be honest. It's the, you, you always see the world in a conditioned way, the way you've been, uh, you know, the way you, your past will always determine how you would see the world. So therefore, it's in your hand, actually. You can see the world in a more positive, more uh, helpful way. Yes, of course, you could do that. Uh, you, you should have to ha have the courage to do that too. Create your, I mean, that, this is what the quantum physics is all about too, right? We create our own reality when we observe. So the any reality would change depending on the observer. So you can change the reality. But you know, it doesn't mean that you can reject the negativity. You can reject the negativity and become positivity. So you have to, first you have to live with the negativity. You have to see the negativity. You have to, then you would see once you open yourself to negativity, yes, there is some positivity inside embedded in this negativity. Like a, um, you know, jewel hidden in the, uh, under the mud. You would see it. Then, then that's a beautiful experience. Thanks. Uh, running out of time. Uh, yeah. No, no, uh, just uh, now I know that you answered three questions very well and uh, it was really fun listening to you also. But okay. uh, can you, would you be able to recall those answers and quickly summarize in Singhala? Please, if you yes. don't mind, just a quick summary to um, be a bit more inclusive where language is concerned. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. For, Problems I can't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> Some of the things, but this is a, it's like this. I think um uh, 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 negativity. I can apply. I'm only question to Muling how question? Ah, how did be? Next time, I do more question. Kohmada me api me api kalche ke. අපි කෙබ අපි අපි ජීවත් වෙන පරිසරයේ අපේ අපේ ස්වාධීනත්වය පවත්ව ගන්න සමහරට අමාරුයි. මොකද අපේ තියෙනවා කල්චර් එකේ පොඩි ක්වොලිටි එකක් තියෙනවා. ඒ කියන්නේ අපේ ජීවිතේ ගොඩක් අනිත් අය අතින් පාලනය වෙන ගතියක් තියෙනවා. විශේෂයෙන්ම තරුණ කෙනෙක් නම්. ඒක තියෙනවා දරුණුවට. මොකද එහෙම තමයි ලෝකේ අපේ කල්චර් එක ගොඩක් හැදිලා තියෙන්නේ. කියන්නේ දෙය අහන්න ඕන. ඒක සහාර කමියුනිකේට් වෙන්නේ නැහැ ගොඩක් වෙලාවට. ඒ කියන්නේ පුතාට තාත්තර දෙයක් කියන්න අමාරුයි. තාත්ත පුතාට කිව්වොත් මිසක්ක. කොහම පුතාට කිව්වොත්. කියන්නේ අනිත් පැත්තට කමියුනිකේට් වෙන්නේ නැහැ. ඉතින් මේක ඇත්තටම දෙමෝපියන්ටත් ලොකු පාඩුවක්. මොකද ළමෙක් හද ළමෙක් එක්ක ජීවත් වෙනවා කියලා කියන්නේ ගොඩක් ඉගෙන ගන්න අවස්ථාවක්. ඒ කියන්නේ මගේ තියෙන මම හිතන් හිටපු දේවල් මම 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 ලෝකේ දකින විදිය සමහර දේවල් වැරදිද හරිද කියලා සමහර ළමය තමයි ඒක නිකන් අපිට ඒක පරාවර්තනය කරලා පෙන්වන්නේ මෙන්න මේක වැරදි කියලා. ඔයා මේ ඔයා මේ කරන වැඩි. සහ ඔයා මේ ලෝකේ දකින විදිය. ඉතින් ඒ ඉගෙන ගන්න තියෙන අවස්ථාව නැති වෙනු එක පැත්තකින්. මොකද අපි විතරක් හරි කියලා හිතලා අපි පහලට තොරතුරු අපෙන් අපෙන් පාර්ලිමේන්ට් විතරක් යන්න ඕන කියලා හිතුවත්. අනිත් දේ තමයි ළමයි. ඒ කියන්නේ ඒ ඒ වගේ පරිසරයක ඉන්න ළමෙක් ඒතකොට අර තමන්ගේ අදහස් ප්‍රකාශ කරන්න තමන්ට හිතර දැනෙන දුක හෝ සතුට ප්‍රකාශ කරන්න එතකොට තමන්ගේ හැඟීම් සමග කනෙක්ට් වෙන්න යාලට තියෙන හැකියාව අඩු වෙන්න පුළුවන්. එතකොට ඒගොල්ලෝ අර මම ඉස්සෙල්ලා කිව්වා වගේ නයිස් ඩෙඩ් පීපල් වෙන්න පුළුවන්. ඒ කියන්නේ යාලා ලෝකෙට මොකද එතකොට මම අර මිනිසුන්ගේ ප්‍රධාන වශයෙන් නීඩ්ස් දෙකක් තියෙන ඕන එකක් තමයි අවශ්‍යතා දෙකයි. එකක් තමයි තව කියන තව තවත් මානුෂයෙක් සමග විශේෂයෙන් තමන් බලා ගන්න කෙනෙක් සමග බැඳීමක් හදා ගන්න එක. ඒ කියන්නේ ඇටැච්මන්ට් අපි කියලා කියන්නේ ඒක හදා ගන්න එක. ඒක අතිශයින් වැදගත්. ඒ කියන්නේ මට මාව අයිති කෙනෙක් මට අයිති කෙනෙක් මා මාත් එක්ක කෙනෙක් ඉන්න කියලා තනියෙන් කවුද එක කිව්වේ no man is an island කියලා කියලා තියෙනවනේ. ඒ කියන්නේ හැම කිසිම කෙනෙක් තනියෙන් ජීවත් වෙන්න බෑ කියන්නේ කන්නේ. ඒක මිනිසුන්ට නේ අවශ්‍යතාවය වැදගත්. ඒක අනිත් එක තමයි ස්වාධීනත්වය කියන එක. ඉතින් මම කැමති දේ කරන්න පුළුවන් කියන එක මෙන්න මේ දෙක නැති වුණොත් මිනිස්සු ඩිප්‍රෙස් වෙනවා. එතකොට අපි හිතමු අපි ළමයෙක්ට හරි කාට හරි එයාගේ අදහස් ප්‍රකාශ කරන එක අපි තහනම් කළා අපි ආදරය දෙන්නේ අපි කියන විදියට ඉන්නවා නම් සහ අපි අපිට ඕන විදියට අදහස් ප්‍රකාශ කරන විතරක් නම් අපි ආදරය කරන්න ඒකට කියන්නේ කන්ඩිෂනල් ලව් කියලා ඇත්තටම කියන්නේ ඒ කියන්නේ එහෙම අපි කන්ඩිෂනල් වෙනවත් එහෙම අපි ලව් ලව් කරන එක හරි අපි එයාවට කෙයා කරන එක හරි එතකොට එයා එයා නයිස් ඩෙඩ් පර්සන් කෙනෙක් බවට පත් වෙනවා එයා කරන්නේ හරි ආදරය දිනා ගන්න ඕනේ සහ හොඳ ළමයෙක් වෙන්න ඕනේ 
ඉතුරු යාගේ ෆීලිංග්ස් යාගේ ඉම්පල්සස් යාට දැනෙන ආශාවල් යාට තියෙන ආවේගයන් ඔක්කොම යා ප්‍රතික්ෂේප කරන්න පුළුවන් වෙනවා අන්නේ වගේ කෙනෙක් ඩිප්‍රෙෂන් චාන්ස් එක වැඩි මොකද යාගේ ජීවිත කාලෙම සමහර ජීවිත කාලෙම ඉදිරියත් වෙලා තියෙන්නේ එහෙමයි මරණකම සමහර වෙලාවට ඒක ප්‍රතික්ෂේප කරමින් තමයි ජීවත් වෙලා තියෙන්නේ ඉතුරු ඒ පුද්ගලයා ඩිප්‍රෙෂන් චාන්ස් එක ගොඩක් වැඩි ඒ වගේම එයාගේ අර ඉමෝෂනල් ලිටරසි කියන එක අඩු වෙනවා. ඒ කියන්නේ Taman ගේ හැඟීම් මොකද ප්‍රතික්ෂේප කිරීම නිසා Taman හැඟීම් යටපත් කිරීම නිසා හැඟීම් එක්ක ජීවත් වෙන්න හුරුකම අඩු වෙනවා. එතකොට නෙගටිව් ෆීලින් එකක් ආවම හැන්ඩල් කරගන්න දන්නේ නැහැ ඒක. ඒ වෙලාවට. ඒ වෙලේ ඉන්ඩික නෙගටිව් ෆීලින් එක තියෙන වෙලාවේ වැඩ කරන විදියට තේරෙන්නේ නැහැ. මොකද ඒ නෙගටිව් ෆීලින් සැමතිස්සෙම එයා බොටල් අප් කරනවා කියන එක යට කර ගැනීම තද කරන්න ගැටියක් තියෙන නිසා. එතකොට එතකොට ඉමෝ එතකොට ඒගොල්ලෝ සමහර විට නෙගටිව් ෆීලින් එකක් තමන් දන්නේ නැහැ ඒ ගැන කියන්න දන්නෙත් නැහැ ඒගොල්ලෝ එතකොට වැරදි වැඩ කරන චාන්ස් එක වැඩි වෙන්න පුළුවන්. මොකද යාල දන්නේ නැහැ මම මෙතන තල්ලු වෙලා දැන් මගේ මූඩ් එක හරි නැහැ. සමහර විට තේරෙනවා ඒක මගේ අද මූඩ් එක හරි නැහැ මම පොඩ්ඩක් එලියට යන්න ඕන. මගේ මූඩ් එක හරි නැහැ මම චුට්ටක් නිදා ගන්න ඒක මම සින්දුවක් අහන්න ඕන. එහෙම තේරෙන්නේ නැති වුණොත් එහෙම. ලිටරසි අඩු කෙනෙක් සමහර විට තමන්ගේ අතින් වෙන හාන්ගි දැනින්න සමහර යාට පේන්නේ නැහැ තමන්ගේ ලෝකෙට වෙන හාන්ගි. ඒ සමන්ට සහ ලෝකෙට වෙන හානිය. बूर्वेटिव भयानकाम उटिया How can a person who is depressed develop their self-efficacy? Yes, very good question. Singhal and Kiran, ah, ek tamam mahi na ne ne pani dega tar vele gat kiel madhi thena ma self-efficacy ki nika apni ah madhya idhu mo arak mam gorak kiya apni paaychi karan ma ma idhu mo matpen pani tar behi vechcha katti apni psychotherapy karadi. विचार नास्ति कर उदाहरण 
थेरपी मेथडिक दवस अंतिम मुकदे मकदेरा उटेडू <laughs> get you back again soon for another webinar uh with a with a what shall i say um a caption of your choice where you would like to talk some talk was about something at least for some three volunteers okay. only when you know if we can organize something which where you can uh, assist us to engage with our clients more positively and more humanely so let us Definitely. meet again and thank you so much again of course of course for your of time course, my pleasure and thank you for those very interesting questions and very really important questions to jomo thank, thank you it was wonderful thank listening you. to you and have a very good night sleep take care thank you thank you take care okay